Ready? AmpRepair.com, 203-892-4119. We have another Ameritron AL811 in for repair and the updates and all that stuff. So, these are great amplifiers when they've been gone through. Just great amps. You know, but you need to put 572s in for them to not have issues, you know, once all the stuff's done. The uh, Chinese 811s just aren't great for RF amplifiers, okay? So... This has had some crazy stuff done to it. You know, I've been keeping my bench clean. Uh, the uh, bubble wraps for tubes for another amp, and some crap that came with this amp. So, this is the modification someone did. I had to look at it. He's feeding voltage back to the tube grid in each tube. Uh, that's all coming out. Uh, you can see. Each grid is not grounded. Came with a new parasitic board, so I'm going to swap that. Put a, new, put a new plate blocker in here. We'll do the bias mod. Add gas discharge tubes. Plate choke is loose. Put the longer screw in. Always do that. Looks like the band switch is loose moves around so I'll take the knob off tighten the nut so customer got this for free I guess it came from a ham fest at some point um, guy got it from tried it never worked blew the tubes up no surprise with that crazy mod so I'm gonna do everything I normally do uh, oh yeah SO239s need to be replaced I always replace them but look these have like no grip I use quality ones from Max Gain Systems. This is getting a brand new set of Pentalab tubes. Awesome, 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 awesome company. Great people there. Okay, so I'm gonna get to work and make this thing better than new. Please like, share, and subscribe. And also notice this. Someone cut the lead for the center tap. Like it's soldered under there. Heat trunk. I'll have to check it out a little bit closer. Just to make sure. <laughs> you just never know. Okay, yeah, look at those solder joints. I'll redo that. Okay. See you guys soon. Remove the filament leads. Clean all that up. They solder to the trace. I like going through, it's a double sided board and trace on both sides. So I'll go through the hole, solder up nice, solder it up nice. Okay, so um, also notice the bypass caps at the cold end of the filament choke have been replaced. Really crappy job, so I'll fix that. The metal oxide varistor still in there, at least one. to see it, you know, but there are so many people that just should not be working on amplifiers. Just created so much extra work here. Okay, see you guys something. That's the center lead of the output coax. It's almost touching ground. Not the red wire, I'm talking about the center conductor of the output coax right there. See you guys soon. Okay, we have a better view now. Has both metal oxide variistors in there, red things, and the bypass caps that someone put in. They put them across the same between ground and one side of the filament. Not both. It's like they screwed up one of the filament leads also, and then they resoldered it and he shrunk it. So probably. Actually, this one too. They may have hit it with the soldering iron, and maybe they had to clip the wires to get the board out. I didn't take the cover off yet back here. They may have 
taking the whole board out, but I'm going to go over all that. I already touched up on leads over here, so yeah, we'll get back to work. See you guys soon. I pulled out one of the metal oxide barriers. This other one was actually a cap, so it is across the other side of the filament. So for some reason he put two in parallel on the opposite side. Probably, who knows? I don't know. Who knows why, but fix it all. See you guys. Okay, so the socket assembly has been uh, removed, I guess, but still wired. Clips are in bad shape. This one's missing retainer clip to keep it compressed. The insulation, sorry about this. The insulation is damaged here. I'm not even sure if that was touching the chassis or not. Horrendous solder work. Someone obviously took this out before I really screwed it up. So, the standoff should have a really thin washer. I have another one here, so um, thin metal, very thin metal washer between the standoff and the bottom of the socket. That was missing for all of them. So um, I'm going to start replacing sockets one by one and reconnecting them. So I've had people confused before. Let's see, these two larger ones are the filament, filament, and this one's always reversed, so filament. Always want to be careful when you plug the tubes in. Just always the two large pins and the two large holes. Two small pins and the two small holes. All the other stuff is set back there. So I'm going to get back to work. I'll see you guys soon. Stay tuned. Okay, so got everything done on the inside. I have not tested it yet. I did turn it on and I noticed the play voltage meter isn't dropping to zero. So no, the meter's not stuck, the meter movement. Let's see, I'll go to plate current. Drops right down. So that's telling me I have an open bleeder slash equalization resistor. So this is going to need new caps and new resistors. Yay. I think a CB or own this at some point. Um, it's been a tremendous amount of work, so uh, I'm going to get back at it. See you guys in a bit. Stay tuned. Hey, so I pulled the caps out. Sorry, I'm getting a million texture. This resistor right here is the culprit. This cap was the one it was in parallel with. Luckily, there's no damage to the bottom of the board. Things I see. So I'm going to replace all four with brand new Kemet caps. I'm going to take all four of these resistors out, put new ones in. I'll see you soon. Stay tuned. I'm back with the completed Ameritron AL811. Customer wants to see it working out 40 meters. Already tested 160 and 80 and 40. So I'm going to do the video here. Then I'm, I'm going to work my way up in bands. One KW slug, bird 43, bird, genuine bird PEP kit. Settings for meters. Radio set to roughly 50 watts or so. Audio hello. Audio hello. 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 600. 600. 600. 600. 600. Audio hello. 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 Audio hello. 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 Audio hello. 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 And works as it should. Okay, so I'm going to continue testing, and then I'll pull the cover off and show you the inside. See you soon. Okay, so I'm back with the completed Ameritron AL811 amplifier. I'll go over everything I did. This thing needed a lot of work. A lot of work. So, where to start? There's all the stuff out of it. So, brand new Chemic Capacitors. Brand new bleeder slash equalization resistors. You always have to change the resistors when you put in new caps. Bias modification. Got rid of that transformer that was down here. Meter protection diode was good. Put in LEDs in the meters. One lamp was out. Someone put LEDs in and they did a really crappy job and one was out. Okay, so has Tom's 
board in here. The customer sent it with it, so I put it in. Otherwise, I would have used the other one. I would have just changed the straps. Um, so, gas discharge tubes at the base of the socket. A plate blocking capacitor. Took all three sockets out like you saw. New sockets. I soldered the leads to each socket real nice. The filament connection leads. Put in new Teflon wire, silver plated stranded center conductor wire for the third socket. The other wire was damaged. Stripped and resoldered the filament leads that come off the board. Back here. Reinstalled the leads through the holes. I don't know if you can see it. I went through the holes, so it soldered both sides. Brand new SO239s. I get them from Max Gain Systems. Great people over there. Got the Pentalab 572B tubes. Awesome, awesome, awesome company. Great people there. Can't say enough good stuff about them. So I ended up running a new lead for the center tap. Going to the board. I pulled uh, one of the filament leads off the board. Some of the strands were broken. I resoldered it. Uh, put new .01 caps in on the uh, the uh, transformer side of the filament choke. Got rid of the met metal oxide variester. There's a piece of solder in there. I'll get rid of that. Um, what else did I do? Fixed other solder joints, especially these up here. There was a bad solder joint at the fuse holder. This thing had 30 amp fuses in it. Big no-no. Big no-no. Don't ever do that. I always check. Always check the fuse size before you ever turn anything on. Just, just never assume. Just always check. Okay, what else did I do? I tightened the hardware for the air variable capacitors and the connection at the back of the plate air variable capacitor. When it goes up to the output network. That was loose. Put a longer screw in the base of the plate choke. Uh, Resoldered the wire, the, the uh, B positive at the base of the plate choke. That wasn't soldered well. Um, what else? There's just so much. Uh, where they redid the uh, leads coming off the filament transformer. They are soldered. I can I felt them really well. They're soldered and heat shrunk, so I left those alone because they were getting kind of short. Almost would run out of uh, room to, to strip it and I didn't want to take a chance damaging the winding. I've seen where winding got damaged. Someone tried to copy one of my mods and actually damaged the winding where it went into the transformer. So I left that alone. It's working like it should. Fixed the wire over here. It wasn't correct so I fixed that. Put the proper put a series dropping resistor in for the LEDs. They also have LEDs in series with them right at the LED. What else? What else? Okay, so the 10 meter input had a problem. So yeah, CBR definitely had this. Uh, it was like stuck in there, all messed up. And so, make a long story short, I got kind of, I got kind of uh, smart and uh, and uh, took, I pulled it out. You know, I creative, I should say. So let me grab something to point at it. So I pulled the form out. Where it goes, there's like a, there are two tubes, there's an inner and the outer, and they get stuck into this base, okay? So I carefully pulled it apart, pulled it out with the core in there, and pulled a good one apart and re-glued it, and stuck it and glued it, so she's good. Then I ended up tuning it, now it's nice and low, it was like crazy high. So it does the full 600 out, all the bands. Um, I've said it before, I don't recommend using these on 17 or 12, so I always the, always tell, talk to the customer first, so I always tweak the input so it's lowest on 15, because you can end up having serious resonance issues on 17, and then 12 meters, I've seen people overheat the ferrite, and then the permeality changes, and then 30, you know, I've never talked to someone that's really cared about 30, so... 160, 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10, about 600 out, uh, 600 out with about 50 in, and, you know, if they wanted to use those other bands, they still can, it's just not going to have as low of an input SPR, and they can always tweak it, so, you know, when I go through an amp, I go through it, I just don't fix it, I want it to last a long, long, long time, so, you know, I just tell people, 
run it within its ratings and don't put it into an open. You should be good. So, other than that, that's about it. Thank you for watching. Hope everyone has a great day. This thing, again, was a lot of work. Just so much work. Just took a long while. So, but nice and clean, right? There's a couple extra holes put in down there, but everything is back to stock. Works great. Okay, so, thanks for watching. Oh, wait. Here's all the old stuff. Here's the cap that failed. The old sockets. The cord. Here's the 30 amp fuses. Yes, the 239s, the resistors. The plate blocker. Here's the, the old tube that came apart from the old input. This is one I took apart from the new one, basically. Slid in. So, oh, that's about it. So, thanks for watching. Have a great night, everybody. I'll be back tomorrow. 73.